Well, we've come down to the coast on the edge of Saint Jordi, Mallorca to catch up with ex international runner turned pro triathlete Emma Pallant. Thanks for joining us today, Emma. No worries, thanks for having me. Well, we are going to be picking Emma's brains on basically how to run fast, and she has got five top tips on how to run like a pro. Now, Emma, what is your first on your list? So, number one would definitely be your run technique. Uh, so, yeah, we all learn to bike, we all learn to swim. Um, but, yeah, not many of us uh, actually think about how we're running. Um, so, I'd say, number one, technique is massively important. And where do you start with your technique? How do you know if you're doing it wrong or what, what you're doing wrong? Uh, so, I think the, the first two major warning signs are if you're getting injured um, or if your, your sessions are progressing and your speeds just aren't. Um, then yeah, there's normally something wrong with you. you've got a dead spot in your running, um, or you're using the wrong muscles. Um, yeah, you just need a breakdown of your your technique. And any tips on like you know someone say you know identifies with being injured or with not improving with their fitness is where, how do you identify that the, the cause of that? Yeah, so the range is massive. Like I've seen so many people from the, the people I coach to just yeah, just looking at people running outside. Um, there's so many different ways of because we're sitting on our, our major muscles um, that we're meant to use for, for running. Um, we all compensate normally in, in a different way if, if they're switched off. Um, so yeah, the first thing is find out why. Um, so a million coaches and, and stuff out there, but maybe look at the people that have a good technique, the people that are running well, um, get them to an analyse you, uh, the people that know their stuff, like how, how do they run fast. Who have you learnt from as a, as a runner? Who have you looked up to to, to learn techniques? Or to... Yeah, so uh, as a runner, I had uh, a really bad knee injury, I had knee surgery, um, and I met Michelle Dillon um, when I moved to triathlon. And um, yeah, she basically broke everything down, so taught me how to run again. Um, and yeah, it was tough. It was tough to relearn totally new um, motor patterns. Yeah, I think that's really encouraging people to hear that, you know, someone who's such a good runner as you, you've actually broken it down and almost started again. That's got to be encouraging for a lot of age groupers out there. Uh, so tip number two uh, would be get the right footwear. Um, so again, there's such a range of uh, shoes on the market um, and for a good reason. We, we all run differently um, and we all find something more comfortable than others. So I'd say take your time to block out um, a whole day maybe and go to a running store, a proper running shop with a, a huge range. Um, get on the treadmill and run in each one till maybe to even 10 minutes, make a session out of it um, until you find something that, that actually feels like a, a part of you. For me, it was hawkers. Um, I've moved yeah, through shoes and, and I found, finally found what, what works for me. Um, and you're almost like your biking shoes, you feel part of the pedal. Yeah. Um, the same thing, you, you want your shoes to feel part of your, your, your feet really. And take your time because if you're like, shoes can be the simple thing between getting injured and not getting injured. Um, and maybe those ones are 60 quid more expensive, but if it saves you 10 physio sessions, yeah. then um, yeah, buy two pairs. Okay, on to point number three, what have you got next? Uh, point number three would be gym work. Um, so again, like we go back to swimming. Um, a lot of people will learn good habits, good motor patterns and strength work outside of the pool. So land training, um, the same thing with running. If you can get the right muscles um, that you need to fire up, if you can get the, the, the muscles that are weak for you, if mm -hmm. you can get them strong um, and get the muscles that you're overusing to relax, um, you're ingraining good habits so that when you run, it will become easier to actually ingrain the new habits. And you talked about earlier on, you know, that we spend a lot of time sitting, so a lot is switched off posteriorly. And you do a bit of coaching yourself as well. Do you see most of your athletes, it's the posterior chain that's not firing and, and the front needs switching off or? Yeah, massively so. Um, because yeah, at the end of the day, the glutes, they're, they're the biggest muscle in our body. Um, and like you say, if, if we're switching them off, so much of the posterior chain, you, you can't connect with the, with the core, the center around it. If that's switched off, you can't connect the other parts of the chain. Um, so yeah, it's working 
throughout the whole range um, and then again using something like yoga, some recovery method um, to also help switch off more of the, the chain that you are overloading. And what do you actually do in the gym? What do you work on for your running style? Yeah, so I do a lot of um, glute work, hamstring work, um, calf work, but more functional. So you don't want the, the strength to come from the calves. Mm -hmm. the, the running comes from the hips, not from, not from the feet. Um, so yeah, it's, it's making the lighter muscles functional. Um, and the big, gross kind of core muscles like your core and your glutes, making them the strong, those are the power work um, and velocity things for like your, your speed, speed hamstring work. And I think, again, like so many of us are guilty of thinking, you know, we've got to run, swim, cycle, and then that's all we've got time for. And if we've got time for another session, we'll do another run or we'll do another bike. But it's easy to overlook that because you don't necessarily see the, the benefits straight away, do you? But Yeah, definitely. And again, it's looking to the future, like, like, do I want to take two weeks off injured or knock five minutes off my run to fire up the, the right muscles beforehand and stretch off the, the right muscles afterwards? Um, and yeah, you've got to, if something has to give, like, gym work should be the last thing that, that drops and it, it is boring like take a yeah. mate along put some good tunes yeah. on like whatever makes it more interesting for you but yeah, yeah do it feel it and and vary it well Emma, that takes us on to point four what have you got now uh, my top tip number four would be the flow so feel the flow of your running yeah in this day and age we're very data driven mm -hmm. um, which can be great for some things um, but yeah sometimes it makes you too rigid. Um, so to get the feel, um, like when you're in the pool, you, you don't want to fight the water, you want to feel it, you want everything in motion. Um, the same thing, sometimes you can overforce um, the running. So learning how to relax and get your flow. Um, I don't know, so, so many things work for, for different people. Like I use music, some people do like the deep breathing. Um, but yeah, just learning sometimes just the feel of your body, like that's the most powerful tool, like your own feedback. Um, that's where you can just push yourself, sometimes even beyond limits in, that you thought you had. And I know that like, you know, for you, you say just enjoy the running and relax and you are a very natural runner. Watching you run looks great and, you know, you must enjoy it naturally. But for someone who running is their weakest of the three disciplines and they find it hard work, how, how can they enjoy it? How can they help to learn to enjoy it? Yeah, and I think that's what massively where technique comes in. If, you, if, you, if your technique is good and your strength, um, like we were born to run, we were made to run. And um, yeah, for me, it's that time, like there's no session that I prefer more than like two and a half hours, just me, my music, <laughs> out in the sun. And, and that should be it. You should just feel at one with your body because it is, it's the body's most natural movement. Yeah. I think a lot of people would enjoy running a lot more if they had someone like me or to go running and do their two and a half run. There. <laughs> cool, well that brings us on to our final point, Emma. What is it? Uh, so my final tip um, would be have a variety. So um, again, we talk about that, that grey patch of training, so that grey zone where you're, if you use 60 minutes all the time, just every day, just a 60 minute run, then you get into like plod mode, mm -hmm. you get to that same speed, um, you're never going to get faster. Um, and you're not getting the most out of your sessions. So um, I'd say vary it, like do your long runs, do your long, really steady, aerobic, good form work, and then do your hard, like intensity, um, that point where you are accumulating lactic, where you're learning to move the muscles on real fatigue. Um, and you do the two opposites, you do your easy, really easy, mm -hmm. and your hard, really hard, then you'll see progressions. Um, it's very much like a race. You can't get the best out of your race if you don't learn to taper and be fresh for it because you, you'll never be able to get to that deep, dark place if you've got a little bit of fatigue in you. That's a really good point. I think a lot of athletes and age groupers are, are worried to run too slowly because you've only got a certain amount of runs a week or a certain amount of runs in you and doing that slow one you think kind of oh well I'm wasting a run like how slow do you do your slow ones and and you know, do you have how often do you put a slow run in or an easy run yeah so um, I learned this when I was in Kenya um, our morning runs uh, we go out on empty and yeah I was I was always like loving it like thinking dropping the Africans and, <laughs> and then you get annihilated in the evening session you get totally trashed um, and the same thing like Michelle and Stu sometimes will make me run the treadmill make me run with them um, before a race if I'm meant to be going steady or on a long run if, if I'm respecting the session that comes the next day um, and it is it's such a dis discipline and, and uh, control and yeah our hands up I don't always run as steady as I should <laughs> um, but yeah then I, I'll pay for it the next day in the session I, I won't hit the times that, that I want to and yeah just get that look from Michelle like yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's okay to take it easy sometimes yeah yeah definitely cool.
Awesome. Emma, thank you so much. Some really interesting and useful tips as well. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Well, if you've enjoyed this and you want to catch other GTM videos, just hit the globe to subscribe. And if you want to see a video Mark did with Lucy Charles on the top five swim tips to go faster, that's just here. And if you want to have a look at my bike, uh, the great BMC, just click here.